Okay, so let's finally talk about Ethiopian food. That last um, little chat that I had that you may have seen, I was getting a bit annoyed about the perception of Ethiopia. Took up a lot of time. But so let's talk about the food. Now I'm going to do a quick overview of Ethiopian food. It's vast, so I, I can't spend that much time. It'll just be a really, really long video. But Ethiopian food is truly amazing. If you haven't had it, please go and have it. Go and find an Ethiopian restaurant near you. Um, it really is beautiful food and the experience is, is just in, in, incredible. So let's talk about the, probably the most famous thing that Ethiopians eat, which is injera. Um, injera is that kind of big, kind of spongy looking kind of pancake. Uh, it's made of something called teff, which is the smallest grain in the world apparently. It's gluten free. Uh, it's fermented and then it's made into a mixture and it's poured in a circular motion onto something called a mitard, which is a, basically a, a big round flat plate. Um, it's not flipped, it's just put on, and then the lid is put on and it steams. And yeah, that's kind of, you know, well, it's a massive thing in Ethiopia. So uh, yeah, that, that's injera, try it out. It's kind of a bit sour, it's got a kind of sour taste to it, but yeah, it's used to kind of pick food up with and eat. Um, also, Ethiopians generally only eat with their right hand, not with their left hand. There's something called a gersha, which um, is when you feed someone else. You know, you, you'll get some, you know, a bit of injera maybe, pick up some food and feed someone. You put it into their mouth, it's called gersha. And it's a kind of sign of respect and love. It's a really beautiful thing, actually. So the national dish, I suppose, is doro what? Doro means chicken and what basically just means stew gravy or curry or something like that do you know? so now that is a, an incredible thing I, mean, I, mean, I remember seeing the first time me seeing doro what being made i'm like how many bloody onions are you putting in there like it's an enormous amount of onions like incredible amount like 10 times more than you'd ever think it takes forever to cook um, the onions are cut really really small just takes forever. It's, it's got a, a, a spice in it called Burberry, which is, you know, not chili. It's got, it's got chili in it, but it's got loads and loads of other things in there. Um, it takes forever. It's got boiled eggs in it. National dish, yeah. It's, it's, it's a big thing. That's Doro what? I've got some other notes here. Okay, so meat. I want to talk about meat now. So you, lamb, beef and chicken. Um, it's pretty much the mainstay. Uh, you're not going to get uh, pork. I've never seen pork there actually. Um, I, I told you that in the last one, it's, it's a, a religious thing. The many Muslims there, and also uh, most of the the Christians are Orthodox, and they don't eat pork. Uh, fish, you're not going to get a lot of fish there. Uh, Ethiopia is a landlocked country, but uh, you do get uh, things like Nile perch and stuff like that, which is you know really nice. But it's not uh, massively famous. Um, but you do, yeah, you do get fish every now and then. Uh, fish is called asa. Um, and then shellfish and stuff like that, you, I, I've, I've never seen that there really. You might see it in the kind of hotels and stuff like that, but generally you don't see shellfish. And again, that's a religious thing that uh, most um, Orthodox Christians don't eat shellfish, shrimps, lobsters and stuff like that. Uh, then, and then we've got uh, kidfo, something called kidfo. Now kidfo is beef. And it's ground, it's, it's, it's ground, it's a very high quality beef, you can't just use any beef. Um, and it's eaten raw, like a kind of steak tartare. And sometimes it's gently cooked in some butter, or spiced butter, known as a kibbe. And beyond that, there's gorid gorid. Now gorid gorid, I mean, I've, I've never eaten it because I just can't face doing it. Gorid gorid is just meat, it's just kind of like, you know, you get a big steak with the fat on and everything a knife, you cut chunks off or cubes off, you dip it in uh, this chili called uh, midmitter, and you just eat it straight. I mean, not for me, but you know, a lot of people eat that, but yeah, I've, I've never really done that one. Uh, let's move on to sort of veg, veg and vegan. Now there's tons and tons and tons of vegan food in the Ethiopian culture. Now, the, the reason that is, is um, I'll explain now, is that the, um, Again, the Christian Orthodox Church, which most people follow, have loads and loads of days and periods of time. There might be a day where you know, they, they fast, there's fasting. Now their fasting is not abstinence, it's not just not eating, 
it just means being vegan. So there's huge periods throughout the, 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 the whole year where, where, where loads of people are, are, are vegan. So hence, there's loads of different vegan food there. Um, lentils or musa um, is re really, really popular. Um, and then just, you know, potatoes, dinage. Um, gomen, which is that, you know, collard green sort of thing. There's tons and tons of this stuff on the go. Um, yeah, so we've covered meats, we've done veg, we've done the national dish, we've done injera. Let's have a little chat about some spices. So, yeah, we spoke about it earlier, but, but Burberry, I'm just looking at my notes, by the way. Uh, Burberry is, is a, a red chili. It looks like you'd think it's chili, but like I say, there's tons of, tons of more stuff going in, on in that. Midmita is chili. It's probably the spiciest thing there. You've got things like uh, the Beso Bella and Cosaret. Uh, they're, they're herbs that are put into the butter, the spice butter, which is a really wonderful thing. It's like a kind of ghee, like a cl clarified butter. Garlic and, and ginger um, are used a lot. Onions are used a lot. Uh, fresh chilies or caria are used a lot. Turmeric is, is a big thing. Um, Turmeric is known as erd. And then there's uh, koramina. Koramina is um, pretty much Ethiopian. So, so koramina is, is a, a cardamom. It's a black cardamom, but it's, it's not like that. It's, they're big. They're really sort of big cardamoms. And you get that real sort of you know, eucalyptus sort of taste and smell from it. Um, what else is there? There's also like little finishing spices like mekalesha, which is like a little combo, like a kind of equivalent maybe to a garam masala. You know, you, you, that, that kind of goes in stews and stuff at, that at the end. Um, but yeah, I really, I would love for you to, I'd love for you to go to uh, an Ethiopian restaurant if you haven't already. Um, because the food is, it, it really is a fantastic. So you're going to get some really spicy food and you're going to get some really sort of mild food. Uh, just a couple of tips. So if, if you're, if you're in, in a restaurant, um, you'll get something like, okay, the word what, remember earlier I said Dora what, what kind of just means stew, roughly. So you're going to get something called uh, kai rot, kai what? Kai, 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 or kai means red. And that's usually spicy. And then you're going to get... Um, stuff cooked with um, turmeric or erd and that's usually quite mild and is known as alicia so if you see something kai what it usually means a bit spicy maybe not not in every case and then alicia usually means that it's quite mild so just a little tip for you there um, and then we've got things like um, fit fit and furfa which are mixtures of so I mean, there's a little difference between fit, fit and furfa. It's quite confusing. But you, what that is, is you can get, you get different stuff. Like you can get like a kind of meat stew and it's mixed with broken um, injera, sort of mixed in and you can do it in veg ways and stuff like that. That's a great thing. And there's also um, derkosh. Derkosh is dried injera. That's also quite a good thing. And then there's sort of like, you know, quanta, which there's like uh, dried meats and stuff like that. It's an incredible, incredible, incredible cuisine. I really recommend that you go for it. Um, and there's one more thing that I need to speak about, and that is coffee, Ethiopian coffee. Coffee comes from Ethiopia. Um, and it's an amazing thing. It happens in my house a lot. I mean, it's pretty much every day. So the beans come, they're raw, they're green, they're washed a few times, then they're roasted on, on, on charcoal or on gas. Um, Rahel, my wife, often just, she walks around the house and fills the house with the smoke and she'll come up to you and you sort of do that. Then she grinds the beans and then it's put, it's put into a, a pot called a jabana, which is um, a, a kind of clay, tall pot, handle, spout. And then it's cooked in there, then the coffee goes in, it's cooked. It's drunk from small little cups, no handle cups called sines. Um, sometimes you can uh, put a little herb in there. There's a herb which is hard to get unless you're in Ethiopia called um, tanadam, which kind of you, you can just throw that in and, and drink it. Some people even put ginger in it. It's usually, yeah, people usually have it black with sugar. There's a little type table. I can't remember what the table is called now. There's a little kind of ceremony table that, 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 that you know you sit down and the person serving the coffee you know pours it all out and hands it over. In Ethiopia, there'd be grass, like long pieces of grass or hay put on the floor. Um, lots of people that don't live in Ethiopia, or Ethiopians that don't live in Ethiopia, kind of have a plastic mat with a kind of fake grass thing on it. 
Um, popcorn is a massive thing in, in Ethiopia, so there'd be popcorn served with the coffee, fruits, sweets, and it's definitely not a Starbucks experience. It's not kind of in, out, off. You know, it's a big thing. You know, you sit down and, um, yeah, you just, yeah, everyone sort of sits down, the coffee is served, and you, I, I think you're traditionally meant to have three cups. They're, they're just tiny little kind of cups like that. Um, yeah, it, it's a massive, massive kind of, it's a great, it's a beautiful kind of social thing. You know, you, you sit down at the end of the day and everyone has a little chat and, yeah, I think my wife actually spends a lot more time drinking coffee than doing stuff actually, so it's a big, big thing. But yeah, Ethiopia is wonderful, Ethiopia food is, is, is truly amazing and I do, do hope that you do go and try it. And, and if you want, you know, just try and cook some stuff at home. A lot of the stuff is quite easy, but it's beautiful. I've calmed down so much more now, haven't I, than that last one where I was getting a little bit annoyed, but there you go. That is my take on Ethiopian food. I hope I've answered loads of your questions. I'll see you very soon. Thank you very much.